Augusta Reed Thomas, Eos, Goddess of Dawn, composed in 2015. Augusta Reed Thomas was born in New York in 1964. According to the Philadelphia Inquirer, her music, quote, is boldly considered music that celebrates the sound of the instruments and reaffirms the vitality of orchestral music, unquote. A Grammy Award winner, Thomas was the longest serving composer in residence with the Chicago Symphony from 1997 through 2006. She is a member of the American Academy of Arts and Sciences and the American Academy of Arts and Letters. The composer writes, quote, I like my music to have the feeling that it is an organic creation being self-propelled on the spot, as if we listeners are overhearing an improvisation. I try to imbue the music with my own physical and mental sense of caprice, an improvisatory spirit, and a joy in a diversity of characters and colors. Eos exhibits a kaleidoscopic variety of rhythmic syntaxes, radiant colors, and resonant harmonic fields. I work hard to present a very clean and thoughtful technical control of materials and orchestration. I hope my efforts result in unique compositions, always luminous and never muddy." Unquote. As an example of that luminous clarity, let's hear the brief seventh and final movement of Thomas's Eos, a movement entitled Sunlight. Ludwig van Beethoven, Piano Concerto No. 2, completed, probably, sort of, in 1795. Beethoven, 1770 to 1827, moved from his hometown of Bonn to Vienna in November of 1792, just a few weeks before his 22nd birthday. Within a matter of months, he had become the darling of the piano-crazed Viennese aristocracy. Vienna, in 1792, was a great piano town. Upwards of 300 professional pianists plied their trade in Vienna. They taught piano and performed in the homes of the aristocracy. They competed with each other in contests of improvisation and virtuosity. This was the highly competitive piano playing as a contact sport environment in which Beethoven found himself in late 1792. Beethoven's ferocious ambition and total lack of self-doubt served him well in such an environment, as did his utterly new way of playing the piano. Truly, the Viennese had never heard anybody play like Beethoven, accustomed as they were to the smooth, fluent, harpsichord-derived technique of Mozart. Here came Beethoven, hands held high, smashing every piano he touched, aiming always for more volume, more resonance, and more raw, expressive power. The stories of Beethoven, an uncouth Rhineland hillbilly among the Viennese, demolishing one after another the great pianists and pianos of Vienna, make fascinating reading. Slowly, Beethoven's reputation as a composer joined his reputation as a pianist. His compositional breakout year was 1795, the year that saw the premiere of, among other works, a piano concerto in B-flat major. That piano concerto had been a long time coming. Beethoven began sketching it in 1787 when he was just 16 years old. 
and he probably completed the first movement in 1789, long before he moved to Vienna. The second and third movements were completed by 1795, although Beethoven revised the concerto in 1798 and then again in 1801. However long in the making, the concerto is a proper homage to Mozart. Proper because composers learn by imitation, and Wolfgang Mozart was, in terms of number and quality, the greatest composer of piano concerti to have ever lived. Having said that, while the size of the orchestra, thematic variety, and large-scale structure of Beethoven's concerto might have been inspired by Mozart, the actual musical content is pure Beethoven. The rhythmic incision, the tendency to suddenly fly off into unexpected key areas, the explosive virtuosity of the piano writing, and the compact nature of the themes themselves are identifiably Beethovenian, despite the fact that he composed the first movement when he was just a kid. The third movement has been an audience favorite since its premiere, and the circumstances of its creation bear noting. Beethoven was unhappy with the original third movement, so a few days before the premiere, he decided to compose a new one. His friend, Franz Wegler, described what happened. Quote, not until the afternoon of the second day before the concert did he write the third movement rondo. And then, while suffering from a pretty severe colic which frequently afflicted him, in the anteroom sat four copyists to whom he handed sheet after sheet as soon as it was finished." Unquote. Let's hear the opening of this third movement. Beethoven saved time by not writing down the piano part, which he retained in his head and played from memory. Yes, freaky. As a matter of fact, Beethoven didn't write out any of the concerto's piano part until 1801, when he was preparing it for publication. By the time this B-flat concerto was published, Beethoven's next piano concerto, cast in C major, had already been published which is why the concerto in B-flat, which was chronologically the first to be composed, was published as number two. Pyotr Ilyich Tchaikovsky, Selections from Swan Lake of 1876. Tchaikovsky, 1840 to 1893, who was among the first graduating class at the St. Petersburg Conservatory and went on to teach at the Moscow Conservatory, was that rarest of musical birds, a mid-19th century Russian composer who from the beginning of his career was well-schooled in the basics of music composition and the Western European repertoire. Tchaikovsky's Slavic temperament and German-style training were shaped by his love for Italian opera, French ballet, and the music of Mozart. Put it all together, and you've got a composer who could write as beautiful a tune as anyone who ever lived, who wore his emotional heart on his sleeve, and yet was able, most of the time, to shape his musical ideas using time-honored Western European compositional techniques. This is particularly germane to all three of Tchaikovsky's ballets, Swan Lake of 1876, Sleeping Beauty of 1889, and The Nutcracker of 1892, not one of which was successful in Tchaikovsky's lifetime. That's because his ballet scores were not considered, at the time, to be proper ballet music. You see, Russian ballet music was usually composed by specialists who wrote nothing but 
dance music. Dance music generally characterized by easily followed um pa pa type rhythmic accentuation and set in even phrases. Along came Tchaikovsky, a composer of symphonies who composed for ballet the way he composed for the symphony hall, writing music in which the grouping of beats is not always obvious and phrases that are not always even. Music replete with overlapping melodies, thematic development, and long-range key relationships. Music that did not merely accompany the dancers, but that deepened the dramatic and emotional action being depicted on stage. It was only after Tchaikovsky's death that his symphonic ballets came to be appreciated for the compositional masterworks that they truly are. Swan Lake tells the story of an enchanted princess named Odette, a prince named Siegfried, and an evil sorcerer named von Rothbart, and his equally rotten daughter, Odile, who attempt to keep Odette and Prince Siegfried apart. Depending upon the version of the story being danced, evil either succeeds, boo-hoo, or fails, yippee yahoo the 13 selections featured in this performance hit pretty much all of the ballet's high spots and concludes with the same crashing, impassioned music as the ballet itself. As an example, let's sample what must be considered Swan Lake's most famous theme. Thank you.